Right, good morning everybody, and welcome to St. John's the Evangelist, um, especially if you're worshipping with us for the first time, it's really great to see you. And welcome to everybody who's online with us as well. Um, I'm doing the notice this morning in my capacity as the uh, warden's unpaid PA, because um, I need to talk to you about electoral roll, which I'm sure you'll find exciting in just a moment. So, um, if you bear with me just two seconds, I've got the warden waving at me from the back. No, okay. Right, first of all, in, in relation to where we work with our vote of candles, if any of you wish to have a vote of candle lit, could you please raise your hand now, please? Fantastic. Okay, thank you. Right, next bit is in relation to the notice sheet. Basically, all the notices are as they are on there. So unless... Um, Anybody has any other particular questions or anything like that at all, as I said, all the notices are on there. But if you do have any questions about any of it, please feel free to speak to Nicola, Nick, or myself, or uh, any of the uh, clergy here, and they'll be pleased to answer. Right. Electoral roll. I know it seems strange that we're coming to this for the second time in the space of six months, but the times are strange, so that's how it goes. Uh, as it stands, the good news is if you are currently on the electoral roll, you have to do absolutely nothing, providing you wish to stay on it. The new electoral roll doesn't get revised for another few months yet, or for another couple of years, sorry, so we're, we're okay there. However, if you're not on the electoral roll of this parish and wish to be so, the notice um, saying that the fact that the electoral roll has been started is today, it's on the notice board out there. In the front row here are some sheets. One is the electoral roll sheet, Second is a GDPR sheet. Um, thanks to the good work that Sue and Nicola did, we are well ahead of the curve in relation to GDPR. So this is in relation to the fact if you wish to have any of your contact details on record, this is basically your consent for that to be so. The electoral roll sheet is very simple and straightforward to fill out. You may be on the electoral roll of two separate parishes if you wish. In fact, you can be on the electoral roll of as many parishes as you like. However, you can only actually serve as an officer, as in PCC, anything like that, on one parish only. Okay, that's just the rules as it stands. By signing this, it doesn't mean the fact that we're automatically going to put you onto the PCC, the Deanery Synod, that's my um, penance in that respect, um, but anybody else who wishes to um, be so, of course, it's coming up soon. Our usual method here is to pop a queen shilling in the bottom of a cup of coffee, and that's uh, basically how you end up on the PCC. So basically, as it stands at the moment, by signing this, it doesn't mean the fact that you're signing yourself up for anything. Now, I'd like to introduce you just very briefly to my little red friend here. This is our post box. As it, st as it stands, what we do is, if you fill one of these out, if you wish to join the electoral roll, this will be by the back door, just there. Pop it in here, it's locked, so all your details are safe. I only have the key, and I will collect it, okay? The electoral roll will finish on the 10th of April, so we only have until the 10th of April to do that, and then it will be published on the 11th, okay? Any questions? I don't like to think I'll probably stand you into silence in that respect. It's not the most exciting thing to talk about beginning a Mass. There's a couple of minutes now, so we'll just prepare ourselves for Mass. Thank you.
Give me justice, O God, and defend my cause against the wicked. Rescue me from deceitful and wicked men. You, O God, are my refuge. Welcome to you all today, and welcome to those joining us online. Today is Passion Sunday. The increasing revelation of his divinity, his movement towards Jerusalem and the cross. How God became human and suffered for us and for our salvation. So we embark upon the last part of our Lenten journey. And as we prepare to celebrate these holy mysteries together, God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Let us then show our love for him by confessing our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned. us all the Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep Most merciful God, who by the death and resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, delivered and saved the world. now and forever. Amen. Amen. Almighty and everlasting God, you hate nothing that you have made. And contrite hearts, that we, worthily lamenting our sins and acknowledging our wretchedness, may receive from you the God of all mercy, perfect remission and forgiveness. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and forever. Amen. Amen. We sit to listen to the scriptures. Taken from the book of Jeremiah. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors. I took them by the hand to bring them out. The Lord, I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God, and they will say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me, from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, my. 
Against you, you alone have I sinned. What is evil in your sight I have done? Have mercy on us, O Lord, for we have sinned. A pure heart. No! You are my son, today I have become your father. And he says in another place, you are a priest forever in the order of Melchizedek. During the days of Jesus' life on earth, he offered up prayers and petitions with fervent cries and tears to the one who could save him from death. And he heard because of his reverent submission Son, though he was, he learned obedience from what he suffered and once made him perfect. He became the source of eternal salvation for all who obey him and was designated by God to be high priest in the order of Melchizedek. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. If a man serves me, says the Lord, he must follow me. Wherever I am, my servant will be there too. Glory to you, O Christ, you are the word of God. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. 
Glory to you, O Lord. Among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew, then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, the hour has tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in the world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, O Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let's begin with the first reading from Jeremiah. Can you imagine a community in which every member has no need to be taught, to be led by the hand, to receive correction, but rather where everyone has the law and the will of God written on their hearts and where all serve the Lord in perfect freedom. Even the most spiritually advanced communities have not attained to this covenant which was prophesied by Jeremiah half a millennium before Christ at a time when everything in the community of Judah was falling apart. They shall all know me from the least of them to the great, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. It sounds like heaven. Hey, from here to there, with the one who is the way, the truth, and the life. Only one of us, Christ himself, the only begotten Son of God, has lived in immediate, moment-by-moment -moment knowledge and obedience communion with the Father, 
And Christ is the way we get from here to there, from falling apart to redemption all around. A picture emerges today in our readings of Christ as the high priest, both in the epistle to the Hebrews and in the gospel according to John. Let's start with the gospel. When some Greeks approached the disciples at the Passover festival in Jerusalem, Jesus responds to their request to see him by declaiming that his hour has arrived. This is the first time in the Gospel of John that he says the hour has come. It's a feature of the Gospel, but this is the first time. The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Jesus is speaking of his death on the cross. And about this, he has three things to say. First, he starts with the simplest and clearest comparison of his death to a natural phenomenon we all know unless a a corn of wheat fall into the ground and dies, it remains alone, just a single grain. But if it dies, it brings forth much fruit. It breaks apart and generates new life. So it is with love. It must be spent, and in being spent, it grows. Second, Jesus is troubled by what this means for him. He is human, more fully and completely human than we who are diminished by sin. And he is disturbed by the sacrifice of himself, which he sees coming. Should he pray, Father, save me from this hour? No, for the whole mission of his life has brought him to this hour. So in union with his Father, he prays, Father... Glorify your name in a voice which the crowd heard and thought was thunder. The father answered, I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. Third, embracing his father's will and his destiny, Jesus describes the effects of his death, his crucifixion. The ruler of this world is judged and driven out by it, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. The cross of Christ, though it is an offense to unbelief, has a mighty power of attraction. Here is love almighty, God Almighty, the grain of wheat which is Christ's life and death will bring forth a great and perennial harvest. So on this Passion Sunday, we are deeply into Lent and Holy Week is near. This picture of Christ the High Priest drawn from our Gospel and our Epistle for today is a glimpse not only of the events of Christ's passion, but also of what Christ has achieved for us and who he is, triumphant on the other side of death. We do well to perceive and hold this image with our own eye of faith. It is an icon of our Savior, not only as a guide for the devout observance of this upcoming Holy Week and Easter, but as an anchor of hope for the soul. Or put another way, a chart and compass for the soul to navigate the changes and chances of this mortal life. Here's a confession. I trust Christ, our High Priest, as my guide through life. 
his self-giving sacrifice, his love in all instances, his care for the poor in every way that it is possible to be poor, his freedom from every form of sin and evil. These and many more graces help me pilot my way through a day, the weeks, and what years may remain. Here's a confession. I take refuge in Christ the High Priest as my Savior from my sins. I place them under His judgment and I acknowledge and repent of them all in my belief that His purpose turning from dead works to times of refreshment and new leases on life and a hope for an advocate and mediator seated at the right hand of God right to the end. Here's a confession. I hold fast to Christ the High Priest when I go through the valley of the shadow of death, either in my own case or in the case of someone I love and cannot bear the thought of losing. Sickness and death will come, but the soul has laid hold of eternal life. And this sickness, therefore, unto physical death. Death, where is your sting? Grave, where is your victory? Much is at stake. Actually, everything is on the line for us as Jesus enters the final suffering of his high priesthood on our behalf. But he has done it. It is finished. He has been lifted up on the cross and glorified at the Father's right hand. Christ is the image, the human face of the invisible God. He lives in and reveals the very heart of the Trinity. Jesus has made Jeremiah's ancient prophecy a real place where he blesses us and is waiting for us to arrive. Let us stand and proclaim our faith in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. 
he ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. In the power of the Spirit and in union with Christ, let us pray to the Father. The hour has come, now is the time to glorify God's name. Let us intercede for all God's creation and for the church, turning to God by responding to each bidding, Lord, your kingdom come. You are our God. May those who are poor and those who are rich, those near and those far, Welcome your covenant of peace. We pray, Lord, your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. We pray, Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. You honour those who choose to serve. Help us to be true followers of your servant son. We pray, Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come. Lord, as your son came into the world for all peoples, be alongside all those in hardship and oppression. Be especially with the peoples of Yemen and Myanmar. We pray, Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. We know that life flows from you. Strengthen all who suffer in mind or body. Especially we remember Margaret, Julie, Jill, Tony, Anne, Marjorie. David, Jane, Julia, Hannah, Terence, Dorothy, Heather, and all those who are suffering from COVID at this time. We pray, Lord, Lord your, your kingdom, kingdom come. come. Hear us as we remember those whose earthly pilgrimage has ended. We call to mind the souls of Graham Buckridge, Anne Tossel, Dolph, Eileen Anstey, Father Ian Young, and Elma Fisher. And those whose anniversary of death occurs now, Gladys Mary Collinson. May they be at rest and at peace. We pray. Lord, Lord your, kingdom your kingdom come. You draw all people to yourself. Bring us out of slavery to possessions and away from the desire of wealth.
In a few moments of silence, Lord, we lay our hopes, fears, and concerns at your feet. Merciful Father, accept, accept these, these prayers, prayers for, the for the sake of your Son, Son our Saviour, Jesus, Jesus Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Would you stand, please? Once we were far off, but now, in union with Christ, we have been brought near through the shedding of Christ's blood. For he is our peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Let us offer one another a sign of peace in appropriate ways. As this water is mingled with this wine, so Christ shed our humanity, may we so share the life of his divinity. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this bread to offer, which earth has given and human hands have made. It will become for us the bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. It will become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Almighty God, may the sacrifice we offer take away the sins of those whom you enlighten with the Christian faith. Wash me truly from my sins, O Lord, and cleanse me from all iniquity. I may go unto the offer God, even though I burn my giant land, as we send to me, and from my cruel spirits, and God will look at me. Now I've forgotten my strength, my self, and me from the white vice of heavenly, while the enemy oppresses me. Now I've forgotten my strength, my self, and me from the white vice of heavenly, while the enemy oppresses me.
pray, my brothers and sisters, that our sacrifice may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his church. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto our Lord God. It is indeed right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord. For as the time of his passion and resurrection draws near, the whole world is called to acknowledge his hidden majesty. The power of the life-giving cross reveals the judgment that has come upon the world and the triumph of Christ crucified. He is the victim who dies no more, the lamb once slain who lives forever, our advocate in heaven to please our cause, exalting us there to join with angels and archangels, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who, in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it, in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. As we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup. We thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Remember, Lord, your church in every land. Watch over her, Lord, and guide her. Reveal her unity, guard her faith, and preserve her in peace. Remember, Lord, those who have died and have gone before us marked with the sign of faith, especially those for whom we would now pray. May all who sleep in Christ find in your presence light, happiness and peace. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of Blessed Mary, the Virgin Mother of God, St. John the Evangelist, our patron, and all the saints may praise and glorify you forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, through him, with him, in him. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. 
Amen. At the Saviour's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and for ever. because we all share in one bread. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word and I shall be healed.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, you have taught us that what we do for the least of our brothers and sisters, we do also for you. Give us the will to be the servant of others as you were the servant of all and gave up your life and died for us, but are alive and reigns now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Christ crucified, draw you to himself to find in him a sure ground for faith, a firm support for hope, and the assurance of sins forgiven, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst you and remain with you always. Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Behold the handmaid of the Lord. Unto me according to thy word. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, Pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, that we may be made worthy the promises of Christ. Let us pray. Pour forth, we beseech thee, O Lord, thy grace into our hearts, that as we have known the incarnation of thy Son, Jesus Christ, by the message of an angel, so by his cross and passion we may be brought to the glory of his resurrection through the same Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Mass is over. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord in the name of Christ. Amen. Amen.